Everybody and welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York. I'm Steve Toby. And today we start chapter 14 of St. Mark's Gospel. Now there's not a whole lot left. In chapter 14 and 15 we read about the betrayal, the arrest, and the crucifixion of Jesus. And chapter 16 is the resurrection. And today we hear about a plot to kill Jesus and we hear about his anointing in Bethany. But before we do all that, I want to invite you, once again, to a Bible study with us here at St. Michael's. We meet on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock and on Sunday mornings at 9.30 for our Bible studies. At 10.30 on Sunday mornings, we have our liturgy. Now we're located in Geneva, New York, 98 Genesee Street. All that information is at the end of this video. I invite you to come. It would be wonderful to have you there. Now, let's go to our psalm. And today I've chosen Psalm 35. It is a prophetic psalm, and you'll understand when you hear it. Um, we're going to pick it up at verse 11. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Malicious witnesses rise up. They ask me of things that I do not know. They repay me evil for good, my soul is bereft. But I, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. I prayed with head bowed on my chest. I went about as though I grieved for my friend or my brother. As one who laments his mother, I bowed down in mourning. But at my stumbling they rejoiced and gathered. They gathered together against me. Wretches whom I did not know tore at me without ceasing, like profane mockers at a feast. They gnash me at me with their teeth. How long, O Lord, will you look on? Rescue me from their destruction, my precious life from the lions. I will thank you in the great congregation. In the mighty thong, I will praise you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alrighty, let's turn to chapter 14, verse 1. Get your Bibles out, chapter 14, verse 1. And we're going to be also referring to St. John, chapter 12. But let's start here. So, it was now two days before the Passover. That would make it Tuesday evening of that Passion Week. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So it was two days before the Passover, which started with the Passover dinner on Thursday evening, and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. You see, at that time, the population would have swelled in Jerusalem to, oh, anywhere between 250,000, some lower estimates, are to a million, some estimates are, of people coming into Jerusalem for the Passover. And remember, Passover was one of the three pilgrimages fe pilgrimage feasts. We have Passover, the Jewish form of Pentecost, and we have the Feast of the Tabernacles. Those are the three pilgrimage feasts where all Jews were able to will come to Jerusalem, to the temple, and gather there for their services. Alrighty. Now, Jesus is going to be anointed at Bethany, starting in verse 3. And this will take place six days before Passover. So it's a, it's a few days, before. it's even before he comes and makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment, of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. And there were some who said to this, themselves indignantly, Why was this ointment wasted like that? For this anoint, ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. 
and they scolded her. Okay, let's stop right there for a second. Um, it was held at the house of Simon the leper. Now, presumably, Simon was formerly a leper. He could no longer be a leper, or they wouldn't have dinner. It would be unthinkable to have dinner at his house. And we will find out that there were many people there, and among them were Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And you remember Lazarus, friend of Jesus, who Jesus wrote, uh, brought from the dead. Um, let me see, what else is in here? Boom, 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 boom. 300 denarii. A denarii was about a day's work worth of work. It was a form of money. And it would have been about almost a year's wage. Almost a year's wages. It was very, very expensive. Now, and it says, a woman came with a, an alabaster flask of ointment. Well, that woman was Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, as we're going to find out here in just a second. So, if you would, flip with me to John, chapter 12, and we'll start at verse 1. Okay? St. John, chapter 12, verse 1. John writes, Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, and remember Bethany is only three or four miles from Jerusalem, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at table. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped her, his feet with her hair. Now if we go to Luke, and we're not going to, Luke chapter 7, verses 37 and 38, we're going to hear of a similar event of a woman pouring ointment on Jesus and wiping his feet with her hair. But that was a separate event, not this event at all. There were two events, very similar, but unrelated. Okay, so going on from there. And so she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. So, Judas Iscariot is motivated by money, greed. So says St. John in his Gospel. And that's why he will betray Jesus. Now let's go back to Mark, chapter 14, and we'll pick it up at verse 6. And remember... They were scolding Mary for anointing, using that expensive ointment made of nard to anoint Jesus. And they said, we could have used this for the poor. And they were scolding her. But Jesus said, according to Mark, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. Again, a foretelling of his upcoming passion and death. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her the Word of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And truly, truly, the world remembers Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Margaret, or Martha. We still read about her today in this Gospel and in St. John's Gospel. Well, to, to, tomorrow, Judas will betray Jesus, and Jesus will spend Passover with his disciples. So until tomorrow, may God bless us all, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh,